because this is a show of lots of different opinions and mm -hmm. we are multi-generational and we all got an opinion. <laughs> I believe you believe that, Whoopi, but you don't. And everybody fucking knows it. Coleman Hughes, I don't know if you know that name or not, incredibly smart young man, wrote a book. I think it's called The End of Race Politics, I believe. Great title, as far as I'm concerned. I'm for it. I'm for the end of race any fucking thing. But uh, Coleman Hughes, he's been doing this a while, doing podcasts, done a lot of interviews. I've seen him a lot with uh, Glenn Lowry, if you know that name. Glenn's a fucking monster. I love Glenn. But uh, Coleman wrote a book, and I guess he's doing a bit of a promotional tour. And the old windbags of the view must have sent my man an invitation. For the love of all of us, he accepted. So uh, we got a couple clips of my man Coleman Hughes masterfully, assassin-esque, just dissecting every bit of the bullshit from the windbag broads of The View. Buckle up. It's a bumpy fucking road. First question that I should ask you to, to, to do is explain to folks what you mean mm. by this. Arguments for a colorblind America. What do you mean when you say that? So a lot of people equate colorblindness to I don't see race mm -hmm. or to pretending not to see race. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big mistake. We all see race, mm -hmm. right? And we're all capable of being racially biased, so we should all be self-aware to that possibility. My argument is not for that. My argument is that we should try our very best to treat people without regard to race, both in our personal lives and our public policy. Of course. Truly, would that not be the fucking ultimate ideal for just a good society for everybody? Where we don't take race into no sense of anything when it comes to making a judgment on anything, policy or personal wise? I mean, that's how I like to think I've lived most of my life. Since I've been taught since kindergarten, treat people the way you want them to treat you. I've attempted to do that most of my life, of regardless of race, gender, sexual orientation. Try to treat people the way I like to be treated. I understand in 2024 that's becoming a little more hard. Put the way Coleman just said it, I am a hundred fucking percent behind every word of that. And that would be the ideal fucking society for all of us. And the reason I wrote this book, thank you. you can clap the reason I wrote this book is because in the past 10 years, it has be become very popular to, in the name of anti-racism, mm -hmm. teach a kind of philosophy to our children and in general that says your race is everything, right? And I think that is the wrong way to fight racism. And that's why I wrote this book at this time. I'm trying to tell you, my man gets it. And it's a shame how just most people will just straw man and just lie on him about everything he actually is saying. When what he's saying couldn't be any more clear and any more perfect. Now let's watch Whoopi completely sidestep that entire fucking little piece he just said there and go into some anecdotal bullshit of why let's not do any of the stuff you just said. Can I, I'm sorry baby, yeah. can I just point out that there is a reason for that. You know, when I went to school, getting any information about anyone's race was not taught in <coughs> history. There was no black history. None of those things were taught. And here in America, a hundred years ago when I was a young woman, <laughs> that's how people saw you. That's how they judged you. So, so how about let's stop doing that? I mean, would that not be the best argument to that where a hundred years ago, that's how people saw you? Wouldn't the best world for all of us be to stop looking at either one of us like that? I mean, I'd argue that's a reasonable, pretty commonsensical fucking take there. But of course it isn't. These people are so hyper fucking focused on race, it's insane. I think to also take into consideration what people have lived through in order to understand why there has been such a, a, a pointing of very specific racial things. Like women couldn't go to co get into colleges. If you are a black person, there are a lot of colleges wouldn't accept you. Trying to equal the playing field. I think that's what a lot of folks were, have been trying to do. The wacky part of all this is that it almost always comes down to a history most of the country has never lived. It's usually brought up all the parts of history that not many people alive today can account for or wherever forced to live through and yet we'll still always bring that up 
as if we can never move past it. We can never move forward. There is never a time in which we could say, okay, let's all work together. Let's all make the world a better place around us. Let's all not look at one another like those assholes did a hundred years ago. Let's not treat each other like those assholes did a hundred years ago and not letting blacks into colleges. Let's just open it up to everybody. Let's just try and be fucking one with one another and try and help one another and not look at each other as if I have something to do with the history you never fucking lived to begin with. It's just so, just a spin, just to always bring that reminder back of all this shit that ain't nobody living through no more. To justify, I guess, racial preferences in 2024, I guess would be her argument. Because people looked at race back in the day, we need to look at race today to, I guess, reverse those roles. Yeah, I think that fucking is stupid. I'm sure, sorry, I didn't sure. mean to cut you off. I think that's your experience and, and that's valid. You know, as a counterpoint, mm -hmm. when I was in fifth grade, we all watched Roots mm -hmm. together yeah. in, in public school. Yeah. So these are different experiences. I, yes. I think it's also different generations. Mm -hmm. It's different parts of the country, mm -hmm. right? We have very different cultures all living together in one yes. country. So I'm not going to deny that. But I think I view this notion of a colorblind society similar to the idea of a peaceful society, which is to say it's an ideal. It's a North Star. Mm -hmm. And the point is not that we're ever going to get there. We're not going to touch it. But we have to know when we're going forward and when we're going backwards. And we're going backwards when we're doing woke kindergarten in San Francisco uh, you know, with, with, you didn't hear about this story? No, you, no, but wait, 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 don't talk about woke kindergarten. Don't talk about woke kindergarten. Don't bring that up, Coleman. But dude, isn't it just beautiful, everything he said up until that? About how this should be the ideal, this should be the North Star that we may not ever ultimately get to and put our hands on it, but we should always be moving in that direction. We should always be looking forward and trying to get to that ideal. Motherfuckers don't want to let us do that no more. I'm trying to tell you, bro, the differences between just when I grew up and the people that were teaching me in school versus the people that are teaching kids nowadays, you want to talk about woke fucking kindergarten? You want a great lesson example from woke kindergarten themselves? Here you go. Spot the difference by key. Woke kindergarten. Can you spot the difference? 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 Now, can you find something that's the same? That's Woke Kindergarten's programming right there. Woke Kindergarten had a quarter million dollar three year contract with San Francisco to teach schools where kids couldn't even read and do math to make programs just like that. That's the type of shit we should all be able to see and say, yeah, that's fucking retarded and we're not doing that. At least they're all gonna pay you fucking money to teach some kids about. It's disgusting, it's political, it's fucking garbage. We kids should be learning just how to read and write, how to fucking shoes, how to be nice kids. You wanna program into them politically biased partisan trash into children. Bro, hold up, hold up. So I got a great little quote right here about what woke kindergarten is. A Hayward Elementary School struggling to boost low test scores and dismal student attendance is spending $250,000 in federal money for an organization called Woke Kindergarten to train teachers to confront white supremacy, disrupt racism and oppression, and remove those barriers to learning. But that's woke fucking kindergarten. And of course the ladies at the view either A, don't know the first fucking thing about it, two, know about it and don't want to let them talk about it to show anybody the insanity of it, or three, which I'd bet you at least three of these broads on this table love. They fucking love that type of shit. They just think it's just the grandest fucking idea they ever fucking heard of. Can't imagine the fucking negative consequences that can be behind teaching kids this shit. What are some, some examples of policies that would be better at reducing uh, racial disparities? So my overall argument is that class, socioeconomics, is a better proxy for disadvantage. We all want to help the disadvantaged, and the question is, how do we identify them, right? The default right now in a, in, in a lot of areas of policy is to use you know, black and Hispanic identity as a proxy for disadvantage. And my argument is that you actually get a better picture of who needs help by looking at 
socioeconomics and, and income. Mm -hmm. that, that picks out people in a more accurate way. Like, dude is fucking sharp. Dude's answers have just been perfect. Fucking chef's goddamn kiss shit. Now here she comes, folks. The absolute worst. And I'll tell you, Joy's fucking bad. Joy Behard is pretty fucking bad. This broad here coming, Sonny fucking Huston, is the worst on all the fucking television. Now watch, she just heard my man bring it up. Yo, class is the best socioeconomic factor of figuring out who is disadvantaged or not. He says right now we're looking at black and Hispanic as an immediate disadvantage on its own, which it fucking isn't. Well, I just, I just, not my question, but when you say that uh, socioeconomics picks out people in a better way than mm -hmm. race, mm -hmm. When you do look at the socioeconomics, you see the huge disparity between white households and black households. You see the huge disparity between white households and Hispanic households. So your argument, and I've read your book twice because I wanted to give it a chance. Mm. Oh, you're a fucking liar. If you're going to sit here and tell us you read that book two times, twice, and you still ain't get what he was trying to say. Yeah, that says more about your reading comprehension if you read the book twice, Sonny, and you still don't get it. God forbid, it's just like they have, to, it has to be race. It has to be race for the reasons why whites on average have a higher income versus blacks on average. I mean, there can't be any other fucking reasons, right? Like there can't be even a second reason of why these people might be living the way they're living. It has to be racism. The history of racism. The history of slavery. The history of white supremacy. The history of just, it's fucking insane, bro. This is like daytime prime slot television, folks, that somehow I guess people are watching it because they're still making it. You hear the man make the argument, yo, there are factors that put people in poorer situations than other people. We need to figure out who the poor people are and attempt to help them, whether it be black, white, Hispanic, whoever, everybody, all of us, not just keep focusing on just fucking race. Got the nerve to talk about, I read your book twice. No, you fucking didn't. No, you fucking didn't. If anything, you had your assistant and probably your assistant's assistant read it and then give you the notes on it the fuck out of here. Um, your argument that race has no place in that equation is really fundamentally flawed in my no, opinion. No, well. Oh, shut the fuck up. You're making it the only place in the fucking scenario. That's your entire fucking premise for your entire fucking argument is that it's solely because of race. Nobody said that there aren't racist people and there's racist shit that happens, sure. It's not the determining fucking factor. Like, God forbid, bro, we'll never fucking get ahead. We'll never get ahead with people like this. The bottom line, the common denominator is always race. They're white, they're black, race, racism. I mean, what else could it be? Of course it's racism. There's two separate questions. One is whether each racial group is socioeconomically the same. That, well, the, I agree with you, the, they're the, not. The, yeah, of they're course. not, and the stats the question show is, that. But the, yeah, of course, I agree with that fully. The question is, how do you how do you address that in the way that actually targets poverty the best? Great. And what Martin Luther King wrote in his book, Why We Can't Wait, mm -hmm. is he called it, we need a Bill of Rights for the Disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, we should address racial inequality. Yes, right. we should address the legacy of slavery. But the way to do that is on the basis of class. And that will disproportionately target blacks and Hispanics because they're disproportionately poor but it will be doing so in a way that also helps the white poor, in a way that addresses poverty as the thing to- Everything the man says is just well thought out, well articulated, and beautifully put to the way anybody and their great grandmother can understand what he's trying to say. Unfortunately, he's dealing with an ideologue who is completely blinded to anything outside of the realm of what she believes. She's lived a pampered bougie entire fucking existence, but somehow just has to have that belief that she is discriminated against because of her skin color. We've got all this history. I mean, like we can't get better, right? I mean, we can't get better with whites and blacks and differences and it's always racism. We can never move forward, ever. Th that part is true, but <clears throat> as you are a student of Dr. King, I'm not only a student of Dr. King, I know his daughter, Bernice. Right? Mm. Oh, she swore that just meant any fucking thing. She paused for a second too. I also know his daughter Bernice. Right? Right? Yeah, bitch, that don't mean shit. And she ain't MLK. So whatever she thinks, believes, or says isn't Martin Luther King thinking, saying, or believing it. 
So fucking get up off that high ass horse. Good God, it's ugly, ain't it? It's fucking ugly when you see it in just real time with these people. Somehow this shit's still on television. So I, I'm, I'm gonna get to my question. Go ahead, go right ahead. Um, I think the premise is fundamentally flawed. You, you claim that colorblindness was the goal of the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. based upon Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, you know, content of character versus the um, color of skin. <laughs> which is something you can't live with, which is something most leftists can't even begin to want or hope for. They can't have that because then they'd have nothing else to blame anything on other than race. Anybody with an ounce of fucking sense realizes the genius of that simple sentence. The content of character over fucking color of their skin. Anybody with an ounce of fucking sense would hope, dream, and strive for that world. Would fucking want to leave a world like that to their kids and grandkids. People like Sonny, Joy, Whoopi, that's the last fucking thing they want. They fucking give that up. They got nothing left. Bernice, Dr. King's daughter, points out that four years after giving that speech, actually, um, Dr. King also said this, a society that has done something special against the Negro for hundreds of years must now do something special for Negroes. He also said in 1968, it was about less than a week before he was assassinated, this country never stops to realize that they owe a people kept in slavery for 244 years. So what do you recommend they're owed, Sonny? I mean, I'm gonna get as real as I could ever fucking be. What do you think the people who never lived that life are owed from the people that never made them not live it? Oh my God, bro. I start hearing like the conversations about reparations. There was something in Boston, uh, like the last week, two weeks, where they got all these churches together and they're talking about how the white churches owe black churches reparations. They're asking for a payout in the billions. So we call on the white church in Boston to join us in supporting a black rep reparations movement. Standing in solidarity, clergy leaders from across the city of Boston gathered for an interfaith multiracial meeting at the Resurrection Lutheran Church in Roxbury, Nubian Square. They're here to ask the religious community to atone for black Boston suffering and support black reparations. And we are coming, as Dr. King said, to get our check. Organizers from the Boston People's yes. Reparation Commission say Hurry they're up, also following down. up on their demand on the city of Boston for a $15 billion initial payout to begin the process towards repair and reconciliation to the city's black community. $5 billion as initial payment around cash payouts, $5 billion around uh, strengthening our financial institutions, creating a new black bank, uh, $5 billion in terms of uh, addressing issues of uh, the education achievement gap between blacks and whites. And of course, that's not even like the solution to them. It's a never ending cycle of just grievance. It's a never ending cycle of taking anybody's responsibility on themselves, getting rid of it to any and everybody else and thinking that the only reason they're living the lives they're living is because of a boogeyman phantom history that none of them ever lived. And you start talking about what people are owed. Once you start having that conversation, dude, I immediately just fucking tune you out because anybody with just some honesty of trying to move forward together in the world together, that ain't a conversation they're ever going to have because I owe you nothing. I owe you nothing. They owe you nothing. They owe you nothing. You owe it to yourself to try and make today better than yesterday. Try and make tomorrow better than today. Can't nobody fulfill that debt for us. It's on us. It's on me. It's on you. So rather than class, he did write about that earlier on. Right before his death, he made the argument for racial equality and racial reparations. And so... You got me with the racial equality. I'm all with you. 100% wholeheartedly racial reparations. Fuck you. Wholeheartedly. Fuck you. Your argument for colorblindness, I think, is something that the right has co-opted. And so many in the black community... <clears throat> so now you speaking for the black community, Sonny? Oh, I'm sure you do that all the time, don't you? Liberally as well. Anytime you, know, you think it'll fucking hit somebody over the head verbally, you love bringing that out. Good God, this woman in her fucking arrogance. It's fucking nauseating. If I'm being honest with you, because I want to be, 
Oh, if I'm being honest with you, you had to pause. If I'm being honest with you, shorty, you're never fucking honest. If I'm being honest with you, fuck, shut the fuck up. Believe that you are being used as a pawn by the right and that you're a charlatan of sorts. He's, he's How fucking disgusting is this woman? You just imagine, I know she's married. You just imagine being married to this woman. Just being as smug and fucking arrogant as she is. Got the nerve to call this man a fucking charlatan. Being used by other people. This man is probably half your fucking age and 10 times smarter than you could ever wish to fucking be, Sonny. He's not a Republican. Well, so how do you, who, who, he's who never voted well, you, 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 you've said that you're a conservative. No, you, you, no. No. no, you did. You actually said that uh, in the <coughs> podcast that you did two weeks ago. No, he didn't. And whoever told you that he did, which is probably the same person you had read his book, is just as fucking stupid as you are. Conservative. Man ain't never in his life said he's fucking conservative. Shut the fuck up. I said I was a conservative. He's not. Yes, he's not. yes he did. If, so, but my question to you, my question to you is, how do you respond okay. to those critics? Okay. Good fucking God, bro. Like, ain't it just disgusting? Imagine the person who watched the same segment and is just like cheering on for Sonny. Just imagine that person as a person. Let's give him a let's okay, let him so answer. Yes. First thing I want to, I, I think it's very important. The quote that you just pointed out about doing something special for the Negro, that's yes. from the book Why We Can't Wait that I, that I just mentioned. Yes. A couple paragraphs later, he lays out exactly what that something special was, yes. and it was the Bill of Rights for the Disadvantaged, a broad class-based po but, policy. But he also says okay. you must include race. <clears throat> no, he didn't. He says it's yes, a... Yes, he does. Okay, well, everyone can go... Everyone should go read the book Why We Can't Wait. Like, yes, he does. I'm good friends with his daughter. Fucking shut up. Shut the fuck up. Let's not get yes, sidetracked by that. Yeah. Give me or sidetracked by any other of the ten number of things she brought up and just slapped all over the fucking wall. Like, Shorty is grimy, bro. This fucking bitch is grimy as shit. Um, I'm, I don't think I've been co-opted by anyone. I've only voted twice, both for Democrats. Mm -hmm. Although, I'm an independent. I would vote for a Republican, mm -hmm. probably a non-Trump Republican, if they were compelling. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's any evidence I've been co-opted by anyone, and I think that that's... That's a, an ad hominem tactic people use to not address really the important conversations we're having here. Oh, fucking, fucking perfection. I'm telling you, bro, this dude Coleman, this dude Coleman, I would take it, bro. He's like, I'm gonna put him in that category of Thomas Sowell. Thomas Sowell, in my humble opinion, one of the smartest people I've ever known in my life. Now, I can't say known, but I've seen, I've heard, I've listened, I've read. Thomas Sowell is like the peak of fucking intellectualism. You might think somebody else, you might not even like the guy. Thomas fucking Sowell to me is that dude. He's that fucking dude. Coleman Hughes, he's working his way to fill them shoes. I'm trying to tell you, this dude is sharp. And I, I think it's better and it would be better for everyone if we stuck to the topics rather than but make it about me but with no, about no evidence you, but I, I, I just i want to give you the opportunity to respond yeah, to the i, I appreciate your criti it. the criticism I appreciate wow 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 she said it's not about you it's not about you i just want to give you the opportunity to respond to this straw man i just made up that has nothing to do with why i'm here the book i wrote or the topics we're discussing how fucking grimy is that and, is it, and it's precisely what he just said it's just a way that gets you not talking about actual topics it's the way it gets you not to talk about the actual solutions that we all need as a world that we all gotta live together we're all together on a big fucking boat and everybody on every level drilling a hole in the floor knocking down walls ripping off fucking doors and we're looking around why is the boat sinking why is this fucking boat sinking i can't begin to imagine why this fucking boat is sinking racist shit there's no evidence that i've been co-opted by anyone i have an independent podcast mm -hmm. i work for cnn as an analyst mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm not listening to anything you say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's just air in here just air with a couple blocks of letters that spell out racism that are just fucking zigzagging banging forth and back of my fucking skull and back of my head i write for the free press I'm independent in all of these endeavors and no one is paying me to say what I'm saying. I'm saying it because I feel it. In other fucking words, he's leaps and bounds more honest than you could ever wish to be, Sonny. Fuck you, man. You're fucking disgusting. This bitch is fucking disgusting. I have a question. Because you write that the anti-racism movement, there are a couple of 
people I don't even know who they are. Maybe. How don't you know who they are? Yo, they're just the lionest fucking women on the planet. You have no idea who the fuck he's talking about. Ibram X. Kennedy, Robin D'Angelo. You've had them on your fucking show. You sat right next to these people. Who are you talking about? Who could these people be? You've met them, you fucking dingbat. Robin D'Angelo. Robin D'Angelo, yeah. Ibram Kendi, for instance. Okay. Well, they, uh, you say that that is just a form of, another form of racism, and you even say it has a lot in common with white supremacy. How can you compare those two things? You, I you compare talk about anti-racism. <laughs> you're comparing it to white supremacy. Because they, they both view your race as an extremely significant part of who you are. Bro, like, bro, like, it, like they're perfect answers to these dingbat questions. Perfection. They are the same. Where race is everything to these people. White supremacists and the anti-racist fucking zombies. Race is everything to these people. It's at the top of every list, of every chart, of every piece of fucking paper. Race is in big, bold, italic, underlined fucking letters. So r r white supremacists, they obviously say, we all know what they say, okay? Uh, Neo-racists like Rob D'Angelo, they say that to be white is to be ignorant, for example. Well, wow. this is a racial stereotype, and I want to call a spade a spade and say this is not the style of anti-racism we have to be teaching our kids. We should be teaching them that your race is not a significant feature of you, who you are. Who you are is your character, your value, and your skin color doesn't say anything about that. Like, elect this man for president. Elect this man tomorrow for the president of the United States of America. I'd let him be the president for the next 50 fucking years. It can't be any fucking worse than what we've already had. Fuck me, man. Like, this, like, is that just not just what you would hope a reasonable human being would say? Let's get over it already. We all fucking bleed red. We all would hopefully want the same thing in a fucking world, which is a better tomorrow for us and our children. That's, that's actually misrepresenting so, what, what Robin D'Angelo's yeah. position is. It's in her book. But, but a lot, that's a lot of, so of here we oh, oh, but that's actually misrepresenting what Robin D'Angelo said. You're a fucking liar, Sonny. You're a fucking liar through and through, and I don't know how you're even in the position you're in. You misrepresent everything Coleman is there to do. You misrepresent his entire fucking argument and his book, and then got the nerve to come to the defense of Robin fucking D'Angelo. And shut up, Sonny. Go. Okay. And so here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Coleman Hughes, for coming, because this is a show of lots of different opinions. <laughs> Oh, we had to fuck. Oh, we had to fucking end it on that same fucking note. We had to end it on that same fucking note, bro. If we're ever gonna move forward, if we're ever gonna fucking move forward and make today and tomorrow better than yesterday, we gotta learn to live with one another. We gotta learn to not look at one another with the fucking sins of a past none of us fucking lived. My biggest fucking argument to any and everyone. This is this is where I stand with. Everyone, people I agree with, people I disagree with. This will be my first, last, and only question to you ever. And dependent upon your answer is dependent where we go from there. Would you allow me to do to you what you want to do to me? If your answer is no, I'll never give you an inch. Fuck you.